ahead and practice. Hi, Bobby. <laughs> Thank oh. you. Okay, I'm
Hey, everybody. Hello. Um, thanks so much for being here. Uh, I was hoping, Bobby, can you turn me down in the other room? That's what's really loud. Um, thank you to Elaine and Janet will be here too. They're going to be talking about the demonstration garden here at our office. So I'm excited about that. I um, was helping last night with the weed. It's down in the amplifier down at the bottom. There's a, yes, it's a volume on the right. Anyways, I was helping last night and I want to talk to you guys about weeds. Lots of times when you're asked to um, look at the label, I don't know about you, but in those on those backs of those products, it's really hard to see. Um, and so you can actually look up the EPA label. So I'm going to share with that you with that with you so we can talk about it. While I'm getting my screen ready, what did everybody think about the weed talk? You were famous again, it's two weeks in a row. Yeah, I got them done two weeks in a row. Now I'm done. I'm actually trying to get my master's. I think I might have already told you guys this. And I just got my data. It's a survey data. And so now I'm going to take some time off from work to try to get this done so I can graduate in May because I have to turn it in by April 4th, basically. I like your haircut, Corey. You're getting Thanks. ready for summer. Getting ready for summer. Yeah, mom gave us all haircuts. Oh, you have mom. Mom, the Well, I mean, I called my wife. Yeah. And I all haircuts. All the kids, that's nice. All the kids got haircuts. Um, are you getting a master's in what? Well, actually, I'm getting a master's in technology. It's called Technology Leadership and Innovation at Purdue. And it's actually a specialty in biometrics, which is facial recognition and thumbprints. But I'm not going to go into Homeland Security or anything. I just, it's a long story, but it's an interest that I have. And so, and actually, I've learned that getting a master's is kind of like, just learning how to read and write again, basically. That's what I found out. So um, really my professor is just like, it's just a master's. Don't, don't kill yourself. I mean, like, come on, it's not brain surgery. You know what I mean? So basically he reminds me how much of it's not a big deal. So, um, but you know, I can't imagine being a PhD. I would not be able to do that probably or want to, um, but my, but it's hard for me, but you know, for PhDs are like, don't kill you it's just a master's so anyways but um he's totally british and i try not to cry too many times i actually have a meeting with him today and i try to stand my ground and be kind of like yeah so um <laughs> he wants me to grow my confidence so that's what's i think that's kind of what it is it's humbling and confidence boosting so yep that's it that's what i'm doing and this job actually as an educator used to always need a master's and, um, but thankfully I was able to get the job as a bachelor's, but I, to be honest, a few years ago, I was just like, you know what, I'm going to play the game of life. I deserve to play the game of life. So I just decided to go get a master's. So that's it. I kind of sometimes didn't want to play the game of life, not in a morbid way, but I feel like it's totally unfair. So I didn't want to play it. I kind of like to be on the outskirts of life and live on the edges, but um, making money is fun and using leveraging my education is fun, but it's also unfair in a lot of ways to other people that maybe don't have that. But um, so hopefully I'm using it to make the world a little bit better place. That's what I'm hoping to do, but um, at least where I'm able to do it. And so that's the long story about my master's. But anyways, I want to take some time off and try to get this work done. How are you guys all doing? Everybody doing okay? Everybody's coming in slowly. Thanks, Bobby, for getting us everybody in here. Doing so good. I want to share. Thank, thank you. Hey, Gwen. Hi. How are you? Good. I just got back from the flower and patio show. Oh, awesome. Did it and go well? There. Yeah, I seen um, the extension was over there. There was a booth. There's good. two buildings. Yeah, it's really pretty. My um, Actually, my brother-in-law, he's working a booth on the weekends for a uh, fire boulder. It's just oh. like rocks with a gas line through it and they light them up and they're really pretty. That's actually out of Fortville. No way. Okay. So tell me what they do. Is it like for just ambiance or is it actually yeah. you can 
Yeah, it's ambiance and a little bit of heat, but it's pretty cool. That's cool. Fire boulder. That's cool. Thank you for sharing. Um, yeah, actually, if you guys wanted to, I know there's a Facebook post. I think that if you can actually get a discount code for $4, how much does it cost to go there, Gwen? I don't even know. I got free tickets for my brother-in-law and a free parking pass, so I've never been. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But Purdue Extension Master Gardeners actually said that you can get a discount, so let me find it for you. How long is that going on? It's going on for like a few weekends, isn't it? Yeah, I think this, I think it was the 14th through the 20 something. Okay. Yes. The 12th through the 20th. Yes. And it's over there at the Indiana State Fairgrounds and at the Purdue Extension Master Gardener Program Facebook page, you can get a $4 discount on your tickets if you wanted to go. Um, so it's right here on their Facebook page here. I'll just give you the link in the chat. I have um, plants and seeds and bulbs and they have a lot of succulents. Um, I got a couple of amaryllis bulbs that are actually growing. They're about 12 inch. Yeah, they're about 12 inches tall. There's no flower buds yet, but they're uh -huh. huge bulbs. They're gigantic. So those I think were like five bucks. I was like, those are really pretty. That's awesome. So, Good. I'm glad you had fun. So you just got back from that? Yeah, I went with my daughter. She's on spring break. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. That's awesome. Yeah. Our master gardeners actually uh, were there volunteering on Saturday, Sunday. So that's another volunteer opportunity you can have. Um, you basically get a free ticket. You usually have to pay for the parking, but you can ask the Master Gardener Association to reimburse you. And then you go and just like Gwen said, they have a booth there and people come up and love to ask questions about plants. So yeah, thanks for sharing that Gwen. I was gonna share um, a page that you can go to the EPA because lots of times, you know, everyone always says the label's a law, which is true. But if you can't read the label, it's tough to read it, obviously, with those small print on the product. So you can actually go to um, products, like let's say we're looking at Roundup, Roundup, and then we put EPA. So you can find the Roundup EPA registration number. And basically, this is the label from the EPA. So then you can read. 42 pages of the label and you can read all about the safety, how to stay safe, um, what to wear. So your PPE and things like that. And so it's basically talking about making sure it's agitated. So it's mixed well. So let's see. Um, See what kind of PPE you're supposed to use for Roundup. And what does PPE stand for? You guys remember that? Personal protective equipment. That's right. That's right. And it's very important to stay safe and also for to just protect your skin and your eyes, all those things. Let's see. Talks about what to do if you get it in your eyes. Personal protective equipment right here. Applicators and other handlers must wear long sleeve shirt and long pants, shoes plus socks, follow manufacturer's instructions for cleaning and maintaining personal protective equipment. If there are no such instructions for washables, use detergent and hot water. Keep and wash PPE separately from other laundry. Discard clothing and other absorbent materials that have been drenched or heavily contaminated with this product's concentrate. Do not reuse them. When handlers are closed systems, or in, use closed systems in closed cabs or aircraft in a manner that meets the requirements listed in the worker protection standard for agricultural pesticides. The handler PPE requirements may be reduced or modified as specified in the worker protection standards. That's the thing, we always wanna keep workers safe. Um, so basically if they're within a cab and it's behind them, they may not have to wear you know, long sleeve shirts. Maybe they can wear short sleeves, just they'll be specified in their worker protection standards to keep them safe. And so anyways, just talks about washing your hands before eating, drinking, chewing gum. So actually last night, someone asked about Roundup safety because I know it's been in the news a lot and also in the um, 
court systems and Roundup is the one of the names of glyphosate. Glyphosate is the active ingredient. And when you kind of go look at some of the information about this, sometimes people weren't using PPE or following these suggestions. So to stay safe, you always want to follow these, especially agriculture workers who are using this so much. That's why they really want um, you to stay safe with that PPE. And if you're not using PPE, you can, getting on your skin is not great. So Anyways, I wanted to share that with you. So if you ever want to find a product label, all you have to do is go to the EPA and put that actual name. You can even look at the active ingredient or the trademark name, and you can then, there's a, a lot of information you can find out about that. It'll also tell you when and how to use it. For instance, someone asked, can't um, chemicals get in water? Yes. So you don't want to apply this glyphosate roundup to water any areas where surface water is present. Like basically if you have a floody, flooding, flooding area, you wouldn't want to put it there because um, the water would then take it into a creek and it's not good for the creek or other places where water goes. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions about it? the EPA website? You can go find all those labels. So the EPA is, you know, made for us as individuals and also for the environment. And it's got a lot of great information on here. In fact, it has information about composting, um, all kinds of information. So I kind of like looking at it. It's just, look, they even talk about bed bugs. So because they're just talking about just the environment, keeping us all safe. Anybody have any questions? Thoughts about labels, safety, Roundup, glyphosate? We'll just start off with the controversial topics. Um, I used to actually personally be anti herbicides because I was scared of them but that's why you do want to use your PPE but now that I've realized how invasives are so crazy in our woodlands that's the only thing that's helping us as a tool to combat Asian bush honeysuckle and that's why we now have native plants coming back because we're actually using Roundup as foliar spray in a popular in a, the most correct way and following the label and um, then because those aren't keeping the natives down, we're getting more plants coming up that will feed our wildlife. So I'm, use, I'm using it as a tool, so I'm thankful for it. And I'm not as afraid since I know how to use it properly. All right, anybody have any other questions about EPA labels or chemicals for herbicides? And what did they say, what did um, Karen say yesterday about chemicals? What did she say we should, when, when, that, when should those be even used? Should it be thought of first or when does it get to be thought of? It's supposed to be the last choice. Yes. When, what do you think the first choices are, Jackie? Well, our normal stuff is... Uh change the environment, change this and that, and all the other good stuff that we can do to make them so that they don't want to live or grow. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yep. Like cultural practices, like for instance, um, making sure we're going to talk about this in turf, but you know, even the height that you mow your grass can actually um, encourage weeds if you're mowing it too low and the grass is a little bit stressed, then the weeds will be able to be dominating. And so if you mow it kind of higher and you keep those weeds shaded out and the grass roots cool and shaded, then you're able to prevent a little bit more weeds culturally. So I think that's kind of cool. We're gonna talk about that in turf. Go ahead, Jackie. 
One of the things I'm behind on is soil testing. I've never done it, and apparently that's a good thing to do. <clears throat> I'm not real sure which way of the products to use, so that's one of my questions. The other one that she said last night is if you got a lot of clover, you're probably low on nitrogen. I grow a number of weeds because I'd rather have weeds than the pesticides. However, I do not mow lower than three inches, but I have a lot of shade, et cetera. So there's always pluses and minuses to ways you keep dancing around mother nature. So uh, I guess my question is, you've said there's soil testing things you recommend, that's one. I don't know if I need different spots in the yard or particular areas because I got two acres. Three, what would be a good nutritional feeding system for the ground? I don't grow lawn, but I grow ground cover. I hear you. May include grass. I hear you. Yes, yes. Um, so when you actually do a soil test, so let's say you have, in general, your ground cover is basically in your front yard, let's just say, you would take about three to five samples and you can actually borrow one of our probes. We have a probe and then you could dig about five inches down and you mix those bags together to make basically a re representative sample of your front yard, if that's the one you're testing. And so you have about five or six of those that you've mixed together to in the bag and you um, can mail it to them and they'll actually give you some suggestions about nutrients. If you're, they can't measure nitrogen actually because nitrogen is very hard to measure what, what you need. So they will be measuring what's there for phosphorus and potassium and a little bit, uh, maybe not micronutrients if you ask them, but they always will generally give you a nitrogen um, recommendation just based on how, what the average person needs to do every year. Because just like you've noticed, sometimes grass needs a little bit of nitrogen and it sounds like that's what your clover is doing. But um, so you may just need to give it a little supplemental nitrogen and they'll give you some ideas about that and the rates, how much and what amount. Um, so they'll just give you a general idea of when and how much put on. Does that make sense, Jackie? Yes. And when you said nitrogen, I go, okay, that's the gas. The gas can't be measured. Da, 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 da. So, okay. Right. That will have a brain cell. Yeah, no, um, you're, you're fine. Go ahead. If I was to go to the co-op there in Greenville. Yes. They would have recommended materials. Yes. And they actually have soil samples there too if you want to do it there. Like I said, I was trying to get it uh, organized here to get a discount. I just haven't done it yet, but maybe I'll just call them today um, because you could, you could get a soil test, do one through our class and we'll pay for it, but I just haven't gotten organized yet, Jackie, but um, I would love to see you guys come here and pick up a soil test and you can use the probe and then you would send it in. Actually, we'd probably bring it back here and we could all mail it together. And um, if that's okay, so Bobby, what do you think? If we, if I get it done today, I could do that. I could get the, everything back like in, um, well, well, what does everybody else think? You think you could have your soil tests back here by um, the end of March and then I'll start turn them in together and I'll pay for it for one test. You guys think that's enough time if I, if you come pick it up? before then and you can get it done by the end of March, March 31st. What do you guys think about that? Uh, clarify what the steps are again for us to do what you're recommending. So you would just, you could just- Or something, what? Yes, so you don't even have to pick it up but I could send you how to do it. You could just put your product in a bag like your soil samples in a Ziploc bag with your name and bring it here and we'll mail it in for you and pay for it. Just one test, okay. one sample. Does that make sense? Grab and some you, dirt in the bag. Okay. Yep. You can just put it in the bag. You don't even have to come here to get that. Bobby, could you send them by email the um, instructions on how to do it from a &L Great Lakes? And then they don't have to drive two times to come here to bring bags of soil. What do you think about that, Bobby? 
Do you want me to send them the kits, the, um, the soil bag and the instructions? No, just send them the instructions by email and they can put their, their soil in a Ziploc bag. And we'll mail it in a box. So they don't have okay. to come twice and we don't have to mail it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so we'll send that to you and I'm going to call today. All right. And then everybody have it back here by March 31st and we'll mail it in. I have another. Um, this is Jackie Dump Day, probably. Um, no, you're fine. Yeah, well, fine. I'm fine. You're fine. We're all fine. There's no <laughs> question about that. Uh, if, I, <laughs> I went through the little site, and I believe there's 14 classes, if I counted right, and I don't always count right, and I believe we just finished half. So I've sat through seven or six of them, actually, and there's a boatload of information they pour forth to us. Um, slides are usually just under 50, yeah. and there's a ton of information. Um, being perfectly frank, my next focus is to pass the test. Yes. Because I'm getting to, and have been, in overload so I think there's a way to approach this so that you can make some sense of this rather than uh, I'm not prepared to prepare for college exam at this time in my life. So <laughs> I, totally I see assistance on uh, last night was the first night that someone actually said this question is on the test. Yes. And yeah. I could have hugged her for that point at least. I know what they're pouring out. It's in there somewhere, somehow. Anyway, if you can help relieve that pressure, I'd appreciate it. For sure. Okay, Jackie, yes. Um, actually, Bobby has created, If you, this is not something to add more pressure to you, but a little quizzes. And maybe it would make you feel better if Bobby put those quizzes. Yes, Gwen, it is open book. It's open book and open policy guide. And the whole point is not to overwhelm you, Jackie, just like you said, there's so many slides, but of course you're, you got your huge book too. So I know it is a lot of information and the whole point and premise is if you are standing at the flower and patio show and someone comes up and says, Jackie, I have creeping Charlie in my turf. What are your suggestions? Or I use... Here, you know what? I got one. I got one. You probably wouldn't get these this question, but today someone called. He has ants in this crawl space. Okay, he called me specifically about this. Um, you can imagine what I thought when he said, and I had a whole can of wasp and hornet spray, and I sprayed it directly on there while down in the crawl space yesterday. And he was like, but they're still alive. And I was like, yeah, because they're ants. Yeah. They're not wasps or hornets. And um, so they've got different biology, you know what I mean? And so my point is you as master gardeners will just need to know how to talk to the public and then where to find the information. So for instance, you're not going to tell them your grandma's recipe on Dawn and vinegar spray. You know what I mean? We're going to, we're going to look at the ED, the education EDU sites, extension sites and give them research-based opinions, I mean, um, research, because we don't want to give opinions. And you know what's happened in the past? The reason why Asian bush honeysuckle is here is because we thought, as the DNR a long time ago, USDA, thought that it would be erosion control. We just kind of thought it would because it grows fast. But really, in reality, it's not great erosion control. So we don't want to make those same mistakes that we're going to have to fix in 50 years. So that's why we are more careful, I think, about our recommendations and more thoughtful and make sure it's backed up by science that has been replicated and can be replicated and has shown to be um, reliable information that has stood the test of time. So that's really all that you need to do and is to know the, how to study. So when we have our open book test, they're not gonna try to trick you. They're not trying to trick you. I know the qu quizzes have been a little tricky sometimes, but they just wanna see if you can find that information in your book. Um, 
and we will have practice. We're going to practice on some cahoots. If you've ever done a cahoot, it's like a little quiz show and it may take a little bit of technology, but um, we'll help you with that. We'll help you through it. Um, and it's really fun. Gwen asks, how many questions are there on the quit on the book test? And is there a time limit? That is a good question. I don't think there's a time limit. As far as I remember, Gwen, last time, you can actually pause it and come back to it. But I think the time that one of my um, students did that, she might have lost all her answers. If that happens, please do not panic. Contact me and I can find those answers for you. And you do not have to redo all that. Does that make sense? Like, don't, don't forget I'm here for you. I will go to bat for you. Um, and Teresa got her half of her quiz, her test back. And then she was like, oh, I stopped there. And then she was like, okay, I can start here. So we can make things work out. It's not lost really forever. Um, it just may look lost and it may be scary, but it's just technology sometimes. You know what I mean? So, so I hope that helped a little bit. I think last time, Gwen, I feel like there was like 75 questions. Um, Bobby, do you remember how many questions there are on that test that you, you graded for Emily just the other day? Because that's the test they're going to be doing, but it will be on Qualtrics. No, but I can check real quick. Thank you, Bobby. Anybody else have questions about the test or studying or anything like that? Yeah, where where is it going to be? Are we going to do it at home or? Yes, Vicki, yes. It'll be because we have it. It's Qualtrics, which is like a survey thing. It will be, um, I'm pretty sure most of them are multiple choice. And then there might be a, a few write-ins, not very many, just like write-ins. For instance, like last night, what was it, the triangle? What did she say was going to be on the test, the IPM triangle? Is that what it was? Or what IPM is? Yeah. So that will be on the test. So that might be a short write-in question. Um, and so it will be on your computer. And then, like I said, you should be able to save and go out of it and then come back to it. And when I say how long it takes, you'll have like a two week window, I believe, or 10 day window to finish this. So. Because I guess when they said open book, I was kind of thinking of buying the electric, electronic version for that reason, because <laughs> I like to be efficient. You know what? Control F is <laughs> control find. Why not? Use your unfair advantage. And let me show so, so that you're not the only one that knows that, Vicki. I'm sure other people know it, but I want to share just in case um, so other people feel like they know what's happening. I don't want to make them feel sad. Let's see if I can. Do I have to usually have it on? A, let me find and mine. I know, and I know you shared the link to buy that, but if you could share it again, maybe. Yeah, for sure. I sure will. Let me find my quiz. All right. So let's say you're on a form like this or something. The, the trick is control. You push the control key, which is the bottom left key of your keyboard. Oh, I got to share my screen. The bottom left key, key of your keyboard, control, put control F, that stands for find. You see, it popped, top, popped up here. It may look different than this in other applications, but, and I don't know, um, Vicki, does it work on websites or does it just mostly work? It, on it, should, it should work on everything. Okay, let's test it. I was afraid to try it to confuse people, but let's just see. So I'm on the EPA, I'm gonna do control F. Oh, look, I can, see, it shows. So let's see what I could find on here. If there's anything about Roundup on the front page. Nope. Let's see if there's anything about California up here. Oh, look, there is. How many? Just one out of one. So, and then let's go back to my, so what would I would like to find here? Let's see, I'm gonna look up IPM. Is there anything about IPM here? No. Is there anything about weeds? Look, there's nine things, one out of nine things. So you just go next and it, see how it's, so basically what Vicki's saying is if she had this as PDF as the book and you have a question that says, uh, tell me the name, the how you do a triangle, the IPM triangle, you just 
put in IPM and any place where IPM is, which is not on this sheet, you'd be able to find it in your book, your PDF book. Does that make sense? Is that what you're thinking, Vicki? I hope I was doing your trick. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Awesome. So um, I think I shared that with Casey last time. Casey, if you possibly have that link or anyone who bought that, if you could share it in chat, that'd be awesome. If not, I will look it up later and share it um, with everybody by email. So, all right. Because I feel like I'm in the same boat as Jackie. I feel like I'm, I'm way behind in my reading and I know I missed, I think it was the second. Okay. The Maybe second. it was, so Casey says it wasn't her. Maybe it was Jessica. I don't know who wanted to buy one and I shared it. Maybe it was Katie. It was a phone number to order. Okay. Thanks, Jessica. I'll find it on, on email, Jessica, and I'll share with everybody. So no worries. Thank you. That's weird that it has to be a phone number to order, but you know, even though we're Purdue in technology, sometimes it feels like we're a little behind the times. We don't use credit cards yet, but we may be, we may be getting to use some credit cards. So we'll see. Um, let's see what else. All right. So does anybody have any questions about any of that? Did that help you at all, just Jackie, to feel a little bit better about the test or did I just kind of blab on? No, no, you didn't blab on. I believe it helps to get a better perspective on time and process in some ways to maybe get my arms around the actual test itself. Um, after I get through that, then we can talk about the eyes, uh, headlight in the eyes over answering all these questions, but that's not for today. Yes, I hear you. And that, so our last day of our class is May tell you i think it's may 4th yes yes that's right and that afternoon i send you the link to that exam and i will also send a separate link to the post survey which remember when you did a pre-survey, the whole point is to see if you learned something over the class, which I know is sounds, it looks, sounds like it'd be the same as the test, but it's different. But, um, but I don't want you to get confused by the two of them. And like I said, if you have any problems at all, technological wise for your test, you will be able to, I mean, I just call me anytime. And I believe then you have till like, I, I like I said, I think it's like 10 days you have to turn it in to submit it and then Bobby will probably grade it. Right, Bobby? And then what Sorry. happens is, thanks Bobby. And then we are not allowed um, FERPA rules. We can't email you your information. Oh good, I'm glad. Katie says the exam information is helpful. Um, so we won't be able to email you your answers. We will actually mail them to you with your letter and your certificate. And also I wanna tell you guys, I'm so proud of you that you've been going regularly to all the classes. Um, John had asked, is, are people missing classes to like, like uh, Jackie said, there's like 14 different places they're meeting and you guys have not been missing classes. So I'm very proud of you because actually that's one of those things that um, determines if you go forward. Like if you miss too many, you can't graduate basically it's very sad but no one's gotten close to that so thank thank you for being reliable and even though you might feel like you're behind you're not behind um bobby says there's 42 questions on the final i don't know how many there are on the qualtrics but that's how many there are on the paper um but that's probably about the same amount thank you bobby thanks for telling us all right Okay. All right, let's look at our quiz. I'm gonna share my screen. Oh my gosh, let's see, here it is. Okay, and did I print out my, 
did not. Okay, fine. All righty. You get my key here so I can make sure I get all the right answers. All right. Oops, don't look the key. All right. We're going to start at the top. Who would like to just read it so I don't have to talk all the time? I would love to. Thank you. Weeds are detrimental because they compete for water, light, nutrients, or all of the above. Okay, don't make Corey have to answer this. D. D, that's right. And if anyone wants to know, that's on your manual, page 461, they say. Awesome. Thanks, Corey. Thanks, Vicki. Who would like to read number two? I can. Okay. Which of the following is not part of a grass leaf? Stamen, blade, ligule, or auricle? Okay. Who would like to answer? Stamen. That's right. Good job. Does anybody remember what stamen is part of? It's part of the reproductive. That's right. Good job on the flower parts. That's right. Number three. Jackie, would you like to read number three? It's minty odor, bright blue flowers, parallel veins, or triangular stem. This is a good one. Who would like to answer this? Remember sedges have what? The triangular stem. Right, sedges have edges. D, good job. Oh, and that sedge hammer is for real. I wasn't saying that as a Oh, joke. I thought you were being funny. I'm sorry I laughed privately towards you. So tell us what that is. Is that an actual? Um... So because I've had this stuff at my last house and it was driving me crazy. I didn't know what it was. So I figured out what it was. Uh -huh. um, and there's, <laughs> it's it's called sedge hammer. Okay. I think it. I think it's one word. See, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And if I'm trying to think if it worked or not, I think it did work. It's very specific to sedges. That is so funny. So yeah, it's Halos, sulfuron. sulfuron, methyl. It's hard to see. That's so interesting. Thank you for sharing that. I thought it was just like a a pun, a little pun. A well, every time I took it out, I was singing that song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I remember that song from the eighties. Yeah, sledgehammer. Probably no one else knows that one, but it's a good one. It's Peter. okay. That's something. Um, what name? was it? Oh, yeah. Peter, oh, yeah. Peter Gabriel. Yeah, Peter Gabriel. Yes, that's hilarious. So it really worked for your sedges, huh? Yeah, you know, I'm trying to manually pull them out. But, you know, you just mow your lawn and two days later, there's six inches of sedge <laughs> hanging out. It was driving me crazy. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Is that a, um, so it's a specific, so it doesn't hurt your grass then? No. That's so cool. Thank you for sharing that, Vicki. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Perfect. Who would like to read number four? I will. Okay. A perennial is a plant which a completes its life cycle in a single year, B, often spreads by both seed and vegetative structures, C, never forms a taproot, D, is easy to control. Okay. So what's the first one? Is a print, what does complete its life cycle in a single year? Do you guys remember what that one is? Annual. Annual, that's right. So that's not A. Um, B. That's right, yes. Good job. Because of the process of elimination. Yep, that's right. Because perennials are not very easy to control, are they? They get real big and it's best to control them when they're babies. Yes. Um, what about number five? Who would like to read that? Uh, 
I'll read it again. Thank you. Which of the following will not influence the biotic triangle for weeds? A, type of plants grown in a garden bed or landscape. Uh, B, present, presence of pest organisms. C, availability of thinning turf or bare ground. Or D, favorable environmental factors. So which ones do not influence it? Now what the heck, go for A. Yes, that's right. Good job, Jackie. So the other ones are basically what can cause the biotic triangle. If there's the pest is there, if there's availability of a place to be and environmental factors. So that's good job. Thank you guys. I'll read this one. I'll take a turn. A contact herbicide is normally not effective against established perennial weeds because we were just talking about this. The chemical only kills germinating seedlings. Perennials are able to rapidly degrade the herbicide. Perennials have small root system that is difficult to kill. That's, that's a tricky one. And the chemical will not move into the root system. So contact herbicide. Why is it not effective against established perennial weeds? D. That's right, D. What chemical, yeah. go ahead. No, you go ahead with your question. Um, what chemical would move into the root system? Not contact, but what is it that goes into the root system? Systemic. Systemic. Yep. Don't ask me that a week from now, because I won't remember. You'll remember. You'll remember. Last night, I heard it over and over. Okay. That's better than me. I don't even think I heard it over and over. So see, Jackie, you're listening better than I was. Um. For some reason, every time I would type, do you guys have this problem when you're typing in the chat on WebEx? It delete, it always deletes my words. Like it would be weird and jump and delete my words. I don't know if you guys had that trouble, but I did. All right, number seven, who would like to read this one? I'll read it. Okay. A plant with a biennial life cycle will continue to grow year after year indefinitely complete their life cycle in two seasons, dies after one season, or none of the above. Okay, and think about what does by mean for a prefix on your etymology. When we're talking about a unicycle, that's one, one um, circle or one wheel. So what's a bicycle is two wheels. So what do you think this is telling us about the life cycle? That it will be two seasons. That's right. So that's B. I like to look at clues like that. It must be maybe the way my brain works. I'm not really sure. Okay, number eight. Who would like to read this one? I will again. Okay, thank you. Which of the following might cause a pre-emergent Pre-emergence herbicide to fail to control weeds. A, application after weeds have become established. B, failure to adjust rate to soil type. C, lack of rainfall or moisture after application. Or D, all of the above. Who knows the answer to that one? Is that D? That's right. It is D. Does that make sense, guys? Do you, so does all that make sense? Anybody have any questions about that? I wasn't sure about the rate to soil type. That's a good point. So that's, we just need to make sure we're reading the label because um, perhaps if it is very sandy compared to clay, they may ask you to put a different amount on because maybe it depends on how it's going to be effective in that soil. So just read that amount. Oh, okay. Does that make sense, Jackie? Yep. Yeah. Anybody have any questions about that? Number nine, I'll read the number nine. Herbicides are not used very often in home gardens because A, all herbicides cannot be used on food crops. B, of the large variety of crops grown in a small area. C, weeds are beneficial to vegetables. And D, they are too expensive. Which one do you think it's the, is the right answer for this one? I like A. Well, but herbicides can, can be used on food crops. Remember? But, but you, not all. Right, correct. 
but See, those were tricky, tricky answers. <laughs> that is the tricky one. <laughs> um, I don't really know. That was just my guess. Yeah. I think it's probably B. It is because there's so many different types. That's the thing. So since there's different varieties of things growing in our home garden, different herbicides could affect them. Like if it was like you were maybe doing a grass spray um, that would not hurt grasses like for corn, but it may hurt your broadleaf tomatoes. So there's just a large variety of crops grown in a small area. That's why herbicides are tough to use when there's a variety of different types of crops being used. Okay, so we'll put B. And that was from, if you wanna look that up in your book, that was from page 476, no, I'm sorry, 466, they said, 466. And number 10, last one, who would like to be our last reader? I can read. Okay. A non-selective herbicide would be best suited for controlling dandelions growing in turf, weeds in cracks of a driveway, perennial weeds in a garden or annual weeds and ornamental plants. And what does non-selective mean? It'll get it all. Everything. It'll get everything. That's right. So where would it be best to use a non-selective herbicide? The weeds and the cracks. That is right. Good job. Anybody I'll have it? I've, I've done A. <laughs> Uh-oh, what happened? Uh, well, I just spotted it. I just kind of <laughs> gave a little thing right i think this weed thing i knew the most about and i'm kind of wondering why <laughs> most experience with i guess i did have something um when she was talking about some of the weeds um plantain dandelion and purslane apparently are good weed can be good weeds if you use them like um i guess medicinal purposes and I recently learned about plantain. Now, um, let me share something about plantain. I don't know what Purdue says about the research, but I do have to share an anecdote. Um, I've actually heard about plantain in good uses of st stings because I'm a beekeeper. And I know anecdotally it did help me. Um, but there was actually a beekeeper. He takes a blood pressure medicine. And he actually put it in his mouth, plantain, because he heard that it's a good idea to do. Long story, it actually really affected him negatively. I think he passed out because it affected his blood pressure medicine. So don't put it in your mouth, basically, is what I'm saying. You might be able to rub it on your um, skin, but it can react to medicines. And I wouldn't want you to do something that would hurt you. Um, that's why we don't obviously promote um, wild eating if it's not been research-based, you know what I mean? So, but, but it is okay to put on skin, like to rub on your skin for bites and stuff like that. Just don't masticate it because you could have a reaction. Does that make sense? I'm sure. I heard honey is the best. Uh, there's also jewel weed, jewel weed's good. Um, Honey, I mean, if you have honey on your, on you, when I got stung by about a hundred bees, uh, I didn't have honey nearby. So I had plantain, so it worked, um, but it was kind of crazy. Um, and we were, my husband and I were like totally shirtless out in the driveway. Thankfully we live in the country. So, but we were like really upset about being stung that many times. It was not very fun. Um, so yes, there are some helpful herbs and plants out there that we have, but just be careful because they can react to your medicines. All right. Anybody have any other questions? Okay. Let's um, talk to, uh, oh, I was going to ask Bobby. Hey, Bobby, can you possibly move the, um, the camera so we can see Janet? Because we see Elaine great, but I would love to see Janet. And so Janet and Elaine are our demonstration committee gardeners here in the extension gardens. And Elaine, they're going to share with us now about what they do and how they volunteered to help us um, here and keep our demonstration gardens up. And we really appreciate all they do. Thank you guys. Here we go. Turn it over to you. 
Hey, we're, we're, Janet is moving, and then she has some pictures I'm going to put on the computer. Yeah, I'm oh, great. Thanks, Bobby. Bobby. You're rocking it. Thank you. So go ahead and introduce yourselves, ladies. Okay, um, I'm Elaine Whitfield, and I'm Janet Reidenauer, and we are co-chairs for the uh, Extension Demonstration Gardens. We've got a, a PowerPoint with some pictures of some work days that we have had and pictures of the gardens. Elaine's going to talk to you about all the different gardens that we have. We have many, and uh, we have usually during the season um, three or four work days a month, uh, different days, different times to try and meet the needs of what people want to come. Our first one is actually next Saturday. So, do you want to go ahead and start? Sure. While we get the picture. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Oh, let me ask you. Mind, and would you mind sharing how long you guys have been master gardeners? Lace, did you see that when I opened up the file thing? Did it come up on the screen, or is it just them talking? Uh, I just didn't see them talking. You have to share your screen. Put share screen. Okay. Well, I don't want to yet. That's what I was. Oh, okay. Thinking. You guys start. Keep talking. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm I'm an old timer at. Master Gardening. Um, I got my um, Master Gardener certificate in 2004. That's the right one. Uh, and I've been a Master Gardener for seven years. I took my class in 2015. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. Okay. No, no, it's not yet. Oh, I'll okay. I haven't shared it. I'm going to turn it on. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll go ahead and explain what gardens we have, if that's okay. Sounds um, perfect. No, 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 no. And I don't know how many of you um, have been here to the extension garden or extension grounds and seen our gardens, but um, if you ever want to come out for a work day, we'll be glad to give you a tour. Um, I'll, um, these are not in any particular order. I'll just kind of, I made a list of the gardens we have around the perimeters and just kind of work around. And there's a number of different types of gardens for those who um, may have a special interest. So we have uh, a nature area out here on one corner where there's some uh, shade trees and we've got some woodland plants and they're mostly their native woodland plants. Um, we have a daylily garden, which if you're driving down uh, Park Avenue, you can't miss in July because it's in full bloom and it's quite an extensive garden. Uh, alongside the daylily garden, we have some iris, um, and a nursery area where we put extra plants, say if they're left over from the plant sale or someone donates them. Um, and of course it's a full sun area. And then we have four, <clears throat> we have four uh, raised beds, which we started with strawberries several years ago and we donate the strawberries to the local soup kitchen. Um, we have uh, recently, uh, there's been a new sign put up in our sign garden out here at the corner uh, where if you're driving down Apple Street or Park Avenue, you can see the new sign. And we've had a number of different plants in there over the years. That's, yeah, that says sign. Um, and we are uh, planning on doing some renovation to it and put, putting some uh, brick pavers around it to kind of control the creeping Charlie and everything else that decides to come visit that area. Um, so we're gonna work on that this year, but we have um, a number of different sun loving plants in there. Um, we have what we call the foundation garden, which is actually right along the um, uh, sides, of, a couple sides of the extension office. You can't miss part of it if you walk in the front door. And a um, couple of members several years ago uh, put a variety of plants. So we have something blooming in there all the time, um, usually way up until late in the season. 
And um, on the east side of that same garden, we have it's got more shades. So we got a lot of hostas and uh, wild geranium and different things like that in there. Then in 2020, when I had nothing else to do during the pandemic, um, in the spring, we um, planned and then finally uh, built a new shade garden on the back side of the office building. It's on the north side, so it gets very little sun. And we had a whole collection of hostas that we needed to do something with. So they're in there now. We've got a couple of hellebores, toad lilies, some other shade lovers. And so that, that garden's really still in development. Um, and then one of our members who's since moved to the other side of the country, but she started a succulent garden out along the front side of the building, which gets full sun nearly all the time. Um, and it's actually in stone. She put succulents out there and they are thriving. So if anyone's into succulent gardening, we have plenty of space to add more. Um, so I don't forget, last year in September, we added, thanks to Lace and another member, they planned a rain garden out in an area um, out by the drive that usually stood in water for several days after rain. And even several days after rain, you could hear yourself squishing out there if you walked in it. And the driveway would get some flooding. That no longer happens since we have the rain garden. And so it's, it's very new and we are excited to see what happens in 2022 with that. Um, we have a, a small strip <laughs> of, of um, a garden along the essentially west side of the building, which we've been working with. Jan and I have tried for a while to get things to grow in it. It's, it's very poor soil, very dry, and it gets some shade. So if anyone likes to experiment with very bad soil <laughs> and has any suggestions, that would be your garden to come work on. Um, but last and not, but not least is our pollinator garden, which I, I consider it our showcase garden. It is in bloom um, for several, several months out of the year, way up into um, the fall actually. And uh, it originally started out as a butterfly garden. We added on to it how many years ago? Five, four, years, four, four or five years, years ago. And now it's called the pollinator garden because we're not just um, concentrating on butterflies. We've had a lot of native plants for bees. Um, the birds love it too. We have um, many native plants that produce seed that the goldfinches are there a lot in the summer. So um, as you can tell, there's a variety of gardens here to suit most anyone's interest. Um, we're trying to experiment with some different plants. We're always trying to do that. And also out in our daylily bed, we're doing some research, quote unquote, with a certain type of weed control for thistle and mugwort. So that's an ongoing study that will take a couple of years. Um, as Janet said, we had the work days throughout the season, several a month. And um, I think I, I mentioned um, we are going to remodel the sign garden. Uh, we want to work on this year, removing some invasive species that have come to visit our native plant area, our nature area. Um, We've got some picnic tables out here in our little shady area that um, we're going to, we had remodeled last year because they were falling apart and we're going to get those painted this year. Um, we also, one, one of our members suggested 
sometime this season, we're going to have, instead of a, a two or three hour session of work day, we're going to have a long work day and plan a lunch, which will be kind of fun for everybody to get to know one another and talk and socialize and do something other than just work out in the gardens. Um, another member ex, um, wants to develop a, uh, she called it a soil health plot out here somewhere, which I think uh, we'll be working with lace on appropriate uh, spot in the uh, extension yard here to do that. And mind if I share something? If anyone sure. needs to go, this is going to be recorded. So if you have to leave for work, um, feel free. But I just want to hear the rest of what Elaine and Janet have to say. But we'll have this recorded. Okay, guys? Thank you for being here if you have to go. Okay, go ahead. I got Elaine. one more thing that okay. might be interested in. Um, we are talking about having a, it's not planned, but it's a possibility, a garden tour for the public sometime this year. That would be fun. Yes, I would, I would think so. So I will turn it over to Janet now. Well, and I want to let everybody know that we do also have a Facebook page that is Sancock County Master Gardeners members only. And all of these pictures that you're, you've seen <clears throat> are some that I put on. I, I take <laughs> pictures and try and attract people to come and help us work because we feel like our gardens here are the showcase and they show what master gardeners do. We have such a wide variety, um, but um, there's all kinds of different things on that Facebook page as well. So That's a good quite point. I, I should invite them once they graduate, then they'll be able to be on there. Yep, that's awesome. Thank you, ladies. And also, you get a lot of your plants here to put in the plant sale. Yes, we donate yes. a lot of plants. As a matter of fact, we already have a list, but we'll be going out and, and looking again. And a lot of times, um, we end up coming over and digging more plants during the plant sale. But yes, a lot of the plants that we, uh, we have here in the garden end up for sale. Yes. And there is a plant sale coming up at the beginning, first weekend of May yes. here at our fairgrounds. And you could actually um, volunteer there as an intern. Well, thank you so much for sharing about what you do in the demonstration garden. And uh, that was an awesome PowerPoint. Thanks for putting it together. <clears throat> I know you're a new probably how to do PowerPoints, but I really appreciate you sharing that because remember you made a lot since you've been, <laughs> since you had our class here, the Google slides class. Yeah. Yep. Janet is the premier photographer. I would take a picture and miss the flower. Oh, not true. Sure. Not sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. She does a good job. Anybody have any questions for the uh, demonstration garden committee before you have to leave? All right. Sounds like everybody. Did you enjoy it? Did you guys enjoy listening to find out about the demonstration garden? Good. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. I'll see you again next week. Let me know if you have any questions in the meantime, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Gwen says it was a good presentation. Thanks, guys. Wow.